All right, let's actually look at using measurements. We've talked about units, we've talked about scientific method, which we make our observation. We've talked about how we make our measurements. Now let's actually talk about using those measurements. All measurements have certain degree, have a certain degree of uncertainty. There are really two factors that result in limitations on measurements. The instrument and the experimenter. Scientists use two words to describe how good measurements are. Those two words are accuracy and precision. Accuracy tells how close a measurement is to the actual value. Precision tells how close a series of measurements are to each other. So really we have two words. Accuracy can be described as correct. Precision can be referred to as consistent. Let's use a golf analogy. If I chip three balls onto this golf uh, green. Let's see if they're accurate or precise. The first one doesn't look very accurate. Remember, we're trying to get close to the pin. Well, the second ball is neither accurate, but not accurate, but it may be precise. It's fairly close to the other one. Third ball, it's not accurate, but it is pretty precise. They're all fairly consistent and they're close to each other. Is it accurate? No. Is it precise? Yes. Yes, it is. Let's chip three more balls onto the green. Well, that's right in the hole. Second one, right beside the other measurement, and it's also right in the hole. Third one, right in the hole and beside the other two. Is it accurate? Yes. Is it precise? Yes. This, these are both accurate and precise. Third example, let's put three more balls somewhere on the screen. Well, these two measurements, neither of them are accurate and they are not precise to each other. You've got one measurement, or one golf ball, way over on the other side. It's not accurate either. It's precise? No, absolutely not. They're not conceivable. Are they accurate? Alrighty then. No. Neither accurate nor precise. <clears throat> In terms of measurement, if I asked three of you to measure the width of the classroom and you found it to be 10.2, 10.3, and 10.4 meters across, are your measurements precise? Well, they're fairly consistent. They're fairly close together. We could probably say they're precise. But based on this data, could we say if they're, whether or not they're accurate? Well, we don't know. We don't have the actual measurement um, here with us. Percent error. Percent error tells how good your measurement or how good your experiment was. How far off are you from the actual answer? Um, it is simply the absolute value of the experimental value, which is your value, minus the literature value or the accepted value, divided by that literature or accepted value times 100. Generally, a percent error of 5% or less in Chemistry 1 is a good percent error. A student determines the density of a substance to be 1.40 grams per milliliter. Find the percent error if the accepted value of the density is 1.36 grams per milliliter. Well, we take the absolute value of the difference between what the student got and what was given, or the actual value, divided by the actual times 100, and you should get approximately 2.9 percent error. For high school chemistry, that's not that bad. Let's talk a little bit about significant figures. Significant figures indicate the precision of a measurement. When recording sig figs, we must record sig figs in a measurement include the known digits plus a final estimate digit. So what do I mean by known digits? If I give you this paper clip to measure with this instrument, we know several things. Okay? We the known digits is the known digit we know is it goes past the two. We know for sure it goes past the two. It also goes past the point one, two, point three mark, right? So we can say this is point two, three, five, maybe. It may go to the halfway mark, but we for sure know that it goes past the two. And for sure know it goes past the point three. Now, that last digit is our estimated digit. This depends solely upon the experimenter or the person taking the measurement. The person has to look and estimate and see how far they think it is 
in between these two measurements. It's probably so this number can vary a little bit. That's our uncertainty. When measuring, when using measuring devices, the location of the estimated digit depends on the smallest division on the scale. For example, if I gave you this ruler and this line to measure, it goes the estimated digit goes one past the smallest division on the scale. All right, so the smallest division on the scale here is the ones place. So our estimated digit, or the one that we have to guess on, would be the tenths place. We could probably say this measurement is 4.5 centimeters inches. I don't have a scale in here, so 4.5. Now, what if I gave you a more precise instrument? Okay, say I give you this instrument. It's a little more precise. It goes, we know for a fact that it goes past the ones digit, so we've got 4 inches. It also goes past the tenths, or we know that it goes to the tenths place. So 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, so we've got 4.5 then we always have to estimate that final digit we could probably estimate this one to be 4.55 so our answer would have three numbers 4.5 which would be our known digits and then the last one we estimate it's about halfway in between so 0.05 so 4.55 scientists always understand that the last number recorded is an estimate for example, let's look at these two rulers. The one on the right is more precise than the one on the left. The measurement that we would get on the left instrument will probably be about one and a half inches is how we could guesstimate that. But the ruler on the right gives us more precision. We, have, we can have more known digits. So we know that we go one point one two three. So 1.4, and we have to estimate that final digit, so we could probably say 1.48 okay, on that measurement. Uncertainty in temperature measurements. We use the thermometer. If the measured value fell exactly on a scale division like it does here, we still have to indicate the precision of that instrument. So we would record it as 30, 30 degrees Celsius. We would still have to have that estimated digit. When looking at volume measurements, use the bottom of the meniscus, that's the little curved line, as the point of reference in making your measurement. If the if the piece of glassware is glass, in reading any scale, your line of sight should be perpendicular to the scale. So, for example, you want to look straight on at your meniscus, so that way you can avoid parallax or um, reading errors. Let's look at these three graduated cylinders and take these measurements. All right, we've got 5 on this first one. 5.1 5 2 3 4 5 6 7. So 5.7, then we have to estimate a final digit. 5.7 probably 2. On this one, it is a less precise instrument. So it's probably going to be 3.0. That meniscus looks like it falls exactly on the line. This third graduated cylinder is 0.3, that's the known digit, and then we have to estimate the next digit. It looks like 0.3, looks about halfway, 